So here in part two, we begin the rebuild, starting with the barrel and center wheel, then the plunger for the setting lever, which allows you to remove the stem. That one's very easy to forget. And then these are secured in place by the barrel bridge. The barrel bridge secures very nicely and, uh, and fits very easily. Sadly, the same cannot be said for the train bridge. Uh, the barrel bridge is secured in place by three screws, as you see there. Then the train of wheels are fitted and uh, the train bridge is secured by two screws. But this is very challenging and very frustrating because it's awkward to just get them all in place to begin with. You then have to fit the bridge on top, which has two very firm fitting locating pegs. And because these require a bit of pressure to fit, it's, um, it's quite a worrying procedure because you have to make sure that the fragile pivots are in place and that you're not going to damage them. And this was easily the longest part of the rebuild. Uh, I found it helped a little by oiling the locating pegs of the train bridge. Next to be fitted is the, uh, the winding works, crown wheel and ratchet wheel, and the click. And then following this, I fit the pallet fork and pallet cock, which is quite straightforward. Next to be fitted is the centre seconds pivot and pinion and that's held in place under light tension by this small brass spring. Uh, it's worth noting here that you need to support that when fitting the seconds hand later. Uh, there I'm pointing to the peg that was most troublesome for me, the one nearest the escape wheel. And, uh, and you'll notice there the balance is in place and when I thought I was filming that I hadn't actually pressed record on the camera so apologies for that and hence why the balance is already in place and ticking away. We then move on to the dial side and I begin by fitting the keyless works and uh, followed by the yoke and the yoke spring. In hindsight, and certainly worth noting for future builds and for yourself, it's best to fit the cannon pinion first um, because the um, setting lever, spring and cover plate covers half of the minute wheel as well. So ideally you want to fit the cannon pinion, the minute wheel and then the keyless works because during fitting of the cannon pinion, once I had remembered that it covered the, the minute wheel, I, uh, the, the jolt of clicking the pinion into place freed the yoke spring, which pinged off and took me about an hour to find. And that eventually turned up behind a speaker on my windowsill. Uh, very frustrating indeed, but we managed to find that and continue with the rebuild. And there you can see the minute wheel, hour wheel and cannon pinion. Apologies for my obscuring the movement during um, large parts of this build and uh, hence the reason quite a bit's been cut out and, uh, and it's 
a little shorter than I thought it would be uh, because I'm still trying to find a good camera angle and unfortunately I'm limited by space but I think if I can try and figure out some way of mounting the camera so it's looking directly down that's probably going to be the best option. For the moment I'm kind of trying to sit it at the side of me and it's it's not working particularly well and unfortunately I cannot set it in front of me. I have tried setting it uh, on a small tripod on the table itself but my table is right up against the window so short of uh, of sitting the camera outside looking through the window which is of course not practical uh, there's little I can do regarding that and uh, here I'm just testing the um, the hand setting works making sure that everything rotates as it should before fitting the uh, the date change intermediate wheel and it advance wheel which is built up of two components and screwed into place and the hour wheel again you'll see a jump where the date components are already fitted and as mentioned this is because during the fitting of that whole thing my head was unfortunately obscuring that procedure so apologies for that Once the data advance wheel is screwed into place, I again just give that a test in the hand setting position to make sure that that's rotating as it should do. Here I'm fitting the date wheel jumper and the date wheel jumper spring is actually fitted after the cover plate is fitted, the, the face of the movement is smooth, as you can see there. There is no recess for the spring to go into. And the cover plate is quite a bit thicker than your typical cover plate that you'll come across on many watches, uh, such as Seiko, for example. And I quite like this. It's a, it's a good feature because the recess is, is built into the cover plate and that large slot that you can see at the bottom allows you to screw down the cover plate, get everything into position, make sure that the jumper is down at the teeth of the wheels and then slide the shepherd's crook spring into the slot which then locates after you've got the cover plate in position which obviously gets rid of the risk of it pinging away while you're trying to position the cover plate so that's a nice little feature. Here I'm loosening the dial screws, which I always tighten prior to going into the cleaning machine. And we're refitting the dial. The dial itself I couldn't clean much because it has crazed, which is a common problem with older Vostoks. Here I'm just showing you the loom where I've re-loomed the dots on the dial and the hands. It's not the clearest, so apologies for that, but it does give you an idea of... Uh, of what's what there. Uh, basically I scraped off the old loom which was crumbling and a real mess anyway and re-loomed the dots on the perimeter of the dial and re-loomed the hands and there I'm just checking that everything rotates smoothly and also rotating the date around to the midnight position so that I can fit the hour and minute hands. I don't show the fitting of the seconds hand because as mentioned previously you need to remove the movement from the movement holder and support the seconds pinion at the back of the movement or it will just push that back and risks damaging the small brass spring that holds that in place. Once the hour and minute hands are fitted I rotate that through 12 hours, um, sometimes 24, just to make sure that the date changes when it should and also to make sure that neither hand interferes with the other during a full rotation. And we then go on to recase the movement. Fitting the stem to make sure that's in the correct position and then the movement ring which is secured by two movement ring screws
The stem is then removed again and greased before refitting to complete the recasing prior to fitting the seal and the case back. It's worth noting that I have already regulated the movement prior to the refitting of the dial and at this point I just loosely refit the case back and allow that to run for a day or two and then recheck and if necessary re-regulate. And at that point there you can clearly see the brassing and wear on the edges. This watch has had a very hard life. Uh, I suspect that whoever owned it probably worked in a machine shop or a grinding uh, environment because of some of the, the marks on the acrylic crystal and on the watch case. Um, that These two are photos of the watch as received and it's very grungy looking as you can see. And although it doesn't look particularly what you would call pretty, um, it's not a restoration as such, it's just kind of spruced it up a bit. I've recolored the red dots on the dial with red enamel paint, relumed the dial and given the dial a very gentle cleaning. You have to be very careful with dial finishes because they are incredibly fragile. And the case has been cleaned and polished, but obviously nothing can be done about the worn areas and the brassing other than giving it a bit of a polish up. But I think that's kind of nice in its own way. So hopefully you found this useful and thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.